Hello and good evening, everyone, again. Welcome to the Sheikh Abdullah Salem Cultural Center virtual platform. I am Nada El Ghussain, Head of Education and Public Engagement, and I will be your host for tonight. Our guest this evening is very special. He is a member of the ISCC family, Dr. Christian Wacker, the director of the Sheikh Abdullah Salem Cultural Center. مساء الخير للجميع اهلا وسهلا فيكم معنا على منصه الشيخ عبد الله سالم مركز الشيخ عبد الله سالم الثقافي الافتراضيه معكم ندى الخسين انا مدير قسم التعليم ومشاركه المجتمع وراح اكون مقدمه البرنامج لهالليله ضيفنا مميز هو من اهل البيت في مركز الشيخ عبد الله سالم المدير العام الدكتور كريستيان واكر دكتور كريستيان واكر is a museum manager, museum developer, cultural educator, archaeologist, and historian. He received his PhD for the ancient gymnasium in Olympia at Würzburg University in Germany in 1996. Dr. Wacker served as a director of three museums, a cultural instigator, and managed more than three different collections and organized more than 50 exhibitions internationally during the last 25 years. Amongst the museums he directed was the Qatar Olympic and Sports Museum from 2008 till 2014, and he will refer to this institution also in his lecture. A Dr. Christian Wacker, who is a mudir wa mutawwar matahaf wa mu'allim thakafi wa alim athar, ومؤرخ وحاصل على درجة دكتورة من جامعة فوتسبرغ في ألمانيا عام 1996 لدراسته المتعلقة بصالة الألعاب الرياضية القديمة في الأولمبيا كان مدير لثلاثة متاحف وعامل كمحرض على الثقافة وأدار أكثر من ثلاث مجموعات من المقتنيات المختلفة ونظم أكثر من خمسين معرض دولي خلال الخمسة وعشرين سنة الماضية من بين المتاحف التي كانت تحت إدارته متحف قطر الأولمبي والرياضي من عام 2008 إلى 2014 وسوف يتطرق إلى هذه المؤسسة خلال حديثه اليوم He taught at universities in Germany and Brazil as well as at the International Olympic Academy in Greece and published around 15 books and 70 papers about Olympic history and education Museum Studies and Archaeology. كان يدرس في جامعات في ألمانيا والبرازيل وكذلك في الأكاديمية الأولمبية الدولية في اليونان ونشر حوالي 15 كتاب و70 بحث حول التاريخ الأولمبي والتعليم ودراسات المتاحف وعلم الآثار. In November 2020 he became director of the Sheikh Abdullah Salem Cultural Center in Kuwait and since then he has been leading this institution towards a very bright future. In November 2020, he Abdullah Salem in Kuwait. The talk for tonight, Cultural Centers and Museums as Instigators for Cultural and National Identification is an opportunity for our public to meet Dr. Wacker and discuss this intriguing topic with him. Please note that the talk will have Arabic subtitles and the live Q&A session and discussion that will follow can be in both languages. You can place your questions in the chat or you can use the raise hand feature so you can participate live with us in the discussion. حديثنا الليلة عن المراكز الثقافية والمتاحف كعوامل محفزة في تحديد الهوية الثقافية والوطنية. إنه فرصة لجمهورنا لمقابلة الدكتور واكر ومناقشة هذا الموضوع المثير للاهتمام معه يرجى ملاحظة أن الحديث يحتوي على ترجمة باللغة العربية وأن الأسئلة التي تليها سوف تكون باللغتين العربية والإنجليزية وإذا حبيتوا تشاركونا أسئلتكم ممكن تحطوها في التشات أو ممكن تستخدموا خاصية رفع اليد وسوف تشاركون مباشرة بالأسئلة فلنبدأ المحاضرة We start the talk now 
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to everybody to this online lecture. Cultural centers and museums as instigators for cultural and national identification. My name is Dr. Christian Wacker, and I'm the director of the Sheikh Abdallah Al Salem Cultural Center. During the last 20 years, more new museums and cultural centers had been established than in the 80 years before. Countries in the Americas, but also in Asia, and especially in the GCC, founded and found such institutions to showcase their cultural heritage and perform nation building. Many of these cultural institutions play an important role as part of the country's branding. This lecture will focus on some case studies and also draw attention to ASK, the Sheikh Abdallah Al Salem Cultural Center, and its importance for Kuwait. The mission of national museums. Museum missions are always based on target groups these institutions are reaching out to, and they are seeking for a community that gets identified with the topics displayed. The Said National Museum in Abu Dhabi, for example, will become the UAE's National Museum, telling the story of the late Sheikh Said bin Sultan al Nahyan, his unification of the United Arab Emirates, the history of the region, and its cultural connections across the world. The national identification to UAE under the ruler's leadership is clearly emphasized as an educational task for the people in the country and abroad. The National Museum of Qatar opened 2019 and is called the People's Museum, the heartbeat of our heritage. Therefore, it also tackles cultural and national identity for education inside the country and abroad. National museums usually deal with national identities and display national heritage. The National Museum of Czech Republic, for example, sees itself as the central state museum with collecting scientific, educational, and methodolo methodological functions and it seeks to enhance the sense of national identity and awareness of being part of the whole framework of European and world community and culture. National identity becomes a prerequisite for the positioning inside the world community and therefore must be culturally shaped through the national museum. Nevertheless, many countries around the world, like the USA or France, do not operate national state museums, but a variety of specialized museums with national talks, with national tasks. Only in Germany, more than 30 museums define national tasks, starting from the German Historical Museum and the German Technical Museum, and going down to smaller size institutions like the German Boxing Museum or the German Spy Museum. Plans for a national museum in Kuwait go back to the times of the foundation of the state of Kuwait. And in 1986, the Kuwait National Museum opened its doors in order to represent and preserve 
the country's heritage and history. Cultural and national identification had been one of the goals of the museum. In our days, identities are not anymore only defined through history, language and religion, as modern society shapes identification tools through globalization, digital media and diversity. Shaping cultural and national identities today needs complex discourses and the merging of different layers of cultural identities in a national context. The Sheikh Abdallah Al Salem Cultural Center with different museums and a variety of topics displayed is such a place for cultural and national identification. National identity versus cultural identities. But what exactly means national identity and how can it be displayed in museums? The exhibition, Germany, Memories of a Nation, at the British Museum 2014, created by Neil McGregor, for example, seemed to have opened the German eyes towards their identity. But isn't it too comfortable to reduce a nation's identity to 100 objects? In this German case to Volkswagen Beetle and white sausages, the catalogue of topics and items supposedly typical to the Germans did not fit with my personal blueprint of national identification at all. Me, for example, I was born in the far south of Bavaria, was educated in the local dialect and practiced local cultural traditions. The ancient Greek philosopher Socrates defined common language, religion, and customs as indicators for ethnic affiliation. In consequence, I would not belong to the Germans, but I do due to my passport. I have a good friend in Qatar, his name is uh, Rashid. He's an even stronger, he has an even stronger problem as he was born in a time when the Qatari nation did not even exist. Until today, he feels comfortable inside his family tribe. His social and cultural identification is related to this tribe and its history. Nevertheless, he is also proud to be Qatari, a modern and wealthy globalized citizen. His national identity is not related to an old Qatari history, but to the mostly economical achievements of his country. The nations in the Middle East are still under construction and national identification processes are mostly connected to Western models like sports stars, entertainers, or industrial products, as well as to future projects. For example, the Expo 2020 in Dubai or the Football World Cup 2022 in Qatar. Cultural heritage usually designs and or constructs identities, especially national identities. The Big Bang for the UK the Statue of Liberty for the US, the pyramids in Giza for Egypt, the Taj Mahal for India, the Forbidden City for China, or the Acropolis in Athens for Greece are pillars of national identities. Sure, Khaled al Bahrain, al Subara in Qatar, Qasr al Hosn for in the UAE, and others are included in the ongoing process of national identification in the Gulf region. 
But most connectivity is given through modern developments rather than traditional cultural heritage. The national identification process also affects the creation and operation of museums in the GCC, and especially basic questions like collection policies and outreach policies, both essential to target and develop audiences. Some observations and recommendations might showcase the different approaches needed to tackle societies in constant transformation during their national identification processes and heritage treatment when building new museums. Assuming that museums in the Gulf region are not only implemented as cultural marketing tools, the question about sustainable museum culture and learning institutions has to be seriously positioned. <clears throat> the heritage. A variety of museums in the GCC are collecting Islamic and Arab heritage. Without going deeper into a discussion about terminology, one might state that heritage of the whole MENA region, and in case of Islamic heritage, items from India, Indonesia, and South China are collected. The Charger Museum of Islamic Civilization, for example, dedicates its collection to tangible remains about Islamic culture and the Museum of Islamic Art in Qatar collects objects of art from the regions and cultures described. But how do citizens from the Gulf connect their identity to ethnic tiles from Ottoman Turkey 300 years ago or Jahname miniatures, miniature depictions from the subcontinent? This question has a certain complexity in itself, taking into consideration that special societies like the subcontinental groups do not have a national identity to the Gulf countries. Even they live there for generations. Maybe a historical analogy could help to get closer to an answer. First in Europe, and since the 19th century, also in the UK, in the US, dukes, kings, and later the young nations collected items related to the foundation of humanism. Western societies were constructed upon cultural heritage of antiquity, and therefore it seemed to be obvious for them to collect Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and Near East antiquities. The Stone of Rosette, for example, the Nike of Samothraki, and the Bust of Cleopatra were turned into items of Western cultural heritage. The young nations in the Gulf are related first to Islamic and second to Arab heritage. And it seems to be more than logical to collect and preserve items related. But how about national identity and recent heritage? The Qatar Olympic and Sports Museum, for example, preserved the young sports heritage of the country and can be regarded as some kind of show window, shop window, for the sports development of Qatar. The collection policy, therefore, states that an item to be collected should document the history of a sports person, a club, or an association in Qatar, or an international, national, or local event in Qatar. This museum collects contemporary history and covers sports stars, like the Olympic gold medal winner, High Champer Mutaz Barshim with objects, interviews, and films. The museum simply documents the ongoing sports activities of the country 
and regards it as part of its collection policy to continue this intense way of collecting. This example might serve as some sort of blueprint to showcase the extraordinary chance of contemporary and everyday life collecting in young nations. Modern collection techniques, techniques incorporate also interviews and other intangible heritage. And it is still possible in the relatively young Gulf nations to broadly cover the exciting nation building process. The Sheikh Abdallah Al Salem Cultural Center opened its doors in 2018 with Generous, generous exhibition scenarios covering science and technology, as well as astronomy, phenomena of nature, Islamic and Arab science, and culture and finance. Various of these topics are directly related to nation building processes and cultural identity in Kuwait. Some example might underline this observation. The country's support of scientific research gets reflected at, the, at, at ASK, at the Sheikh Abdallah Al Salem Cultural Center, and must be strengthened in the years to come. Climate change and the growth of the world population a most serious challenges for the humanity of the future. Urbanization processes, like also in the city of Kuwait, cause dramatic changes in our natural environment. ASK has the mandatory obligation to educate its visitors about nature, but also the consequences of its destruction to at least slow down these processes. The Kuwait Vision 2035 defines seven pillars where sustainability plays a central role. ASK must be the showcase to promote sensitive treatment of our natural environment. Modern cultural expression is mainly mirrored in contemporary art. ASK provides an excellent stage for artistic mimesis and will continue to bring artists together, provide them space for their creativity, and make them part of modern cultural identity in Kuwait. Islamic and Arab culture are displayed in ASK as well. Historical achievements of these cultures long before the foundation of the modern state of Kuwait are covered. But again, how are Islamic ties from the 17th century connected to modern Kuwait? Nations and societies are based on the past, but the past of the state of Kuwait is 60 years young. However, not less important. Therefore, ASK is going to reach out, covering the modern history of Kuwait and plans to develop its collection policy accordingly. Target groups. Museums are public spaces and therefore accessible to everybody. In consequence, and especially for countries with diverse societies, target groups have to be reached with different approaches. Museum culture, for example, the habit to visit museums frequently as learning institutions, does not yet exist in broader local public. Talking about the local public means encompassing the local Gulf population. The huge population from subcontinental countries, including Pakistan and India. The various groups from diverse Arab countries, 
and also the small groups of Americans, Europeans, and Far Easterners, who usually do not stay on longer terms in Gulf, approximately two to five years. Different cultural backgrounds mean different approaches to reach out to these groups. Sure, programs for schools, students, general group guided tours, etc., are set up following the techniques and strategies known. But how attract different cultural identities living together in one country? The topic might formulate common sense. For example, Islamic topics, mainstream exhibitions like Titanic, Sherlock Holmes, dinosaurs. But shouldn't museums do more than entertain? The Gulf countries are keen to educate their population also through museums and should reach out with special programs to the public before and after the museum visit, the so-called outreach programs. Art museums offer painting classes at schools. Museums for cultural history provide guided excursions to historical sites. Natural history museums provide the beauty of geological phenomena on site. The Catalunya Sports Museum organized the exhibition Olympics past and present, back in 2013, to educate the public about the Olympic Games from antiquity to our days and drive attention to the contribution of Qatar in the Olympic movement. This happened inside the exhibition with a vigorous learning program, including sports activities from the past, an event program with an art slam, sports stars inside the exhibition, a film festival and others as well as programs outside the exhibition. The NGO Youth Company, dedicated to engaged youth in Qatar, organized together with the museum a sports happening, including torch relay. The museum itself set up an international conference about doping and anti-doping together with sports authorities of Qatar. These different layers of outreach programs helped to reach out to diverse public groups, including youth and sports takers inside and outside the exhibition. The Sheikh Abdallah Salem Cultural Center has huge potential for outreach programs targeting different audience groups due to the variety of museums and topics displayed in the cultural center. The visit itself must remain the main experience for our customers, but pre-visiting programs and post-processing offers will complete the approach to be the cultural hub for cultural and national identity in Kuwait. Three assertions are to be made. First, museums in the Gulf are landmarks to promote the Gulf countries abroad, tools for cultural marketing, and guardians for Islamic and Arab cultural heritage. But only sustainable policies and programs may assure the ongoing process of national identification. Two, many museums in the Gulf collect Islamic and Arab heritage. The connotation to the modern Gulf societies is not obvious for many citizens. In more stringent educational programs might help to intensify the identification process. And three, modern and everyday life culture is a popular possibility to affect national identity. 
Besides knowing where my ancestors came from, I'm curious to understand where I am coming, coming from, my school, my first car, my clothes, and my identity. Thank you very much for attending this online lecture. Thank you very much, Dr. Wacker. You're very much welcome. Uh, we're going to move now to the questions from the audience. Please type your questions in the chat if you have any questions for Dr. Wacker or use the raise hand feature so you can participate live in the discussion. Um, إذا في عندكم أي أسئلة لدكتور كريستيان واكر من فضلكم حطوهم في الشات أو إذا بتحبوا تشاركونا مباشرة بالأسئلة ممكن تستخدموا خاصية رفع الأيدي في تطبيق زوم في عنا أسئلة انطرحت فرح أبدأ فيها دكتور واكر the first question for you for tonight um, how do you see the future of ASCC in Kuwait Yes, um, of course, I see it very bright to summarize it in a, in a nutshell. Um, we should not forget that um, this cultural center in Kuwait is a pretty young cultural center, only opened um, a little bit more than three years ago um, and was until now very successful, already hosting uh, more than 750,000 visitors. So in about one year's time, it's possible to, uh, uh, to, to reach 1 million, which is a huge success. Due to the setup, and as I said in the lecture, the setup offers a lot of opportunities for further development. To my opinion, the future of, uh, the, future of the Sheikh Abdallah Al Salem Center is a future which is going very far into diversity to, to reach out to different target groups. And I'm not speaking only about the, 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 the different national groups. I'm speaking also uh, in, in, in layers of uh, starting with the toddlers, with the very small visitors up to the, to the, to the age group. So um, ASK already started to reach out with certain programs and uh, some might know, some might know that uh, we have programs also online for that, that we already started to reach out to the different groups. This is a huge opportunity for the future. Another opportunity is, um, is the opportunity to organize temporary exhibitions. Temporary exhibitions are a possibility to react, and we have the, we have the space in the Sheikh Abdallah Salem Center anyhow, to react on, on, on actual and current topics. And due to our museums who have, uh, diff who have different approaches inside the society, it's very much possible to host these exhibitions. This is a second leg, which I regard as very important. To summarize it, um, I'm, uh, um, I, I wish, and this is my dream, that in the next years, Sheikh Abdallah Al Salem Center will get into the absolutely, not the first league, we are already arrived at the first league, but uh, to the Champions League and will play an important role in this Champions League, not only in the GCC, but also abroad. Thank you. So, بإختصار السؤال كان سألنا دكتور واكر كيف بيشوف مستقبل مركز الشيخ عبد الله سالم ثقافي ودكتور واكر جاوب انه المركز موجود في متاحف متنوعة ومعروضات متنوعة بيحاول انه يوصل لجميع شرائح المجتمع ويكون متنوع بالبرامج وبجميع المعارض يلي بيجيبها اذا كانت موقتة ولا طويلة الأمد وبيشوف أنه المركز عنده قدرة عالية على استقطاب الجماهير لأنه حتى الآن صار في عنا أكثر من 700 ألف زائر ورح نوصل قريبا للمليون زائر وهذا أكيد بفضل المعروضات الموجودة والفريق العمل يلي عم بيشتغل بجهد كبير السؤال الثاني The second question Dr. Christian How can you connect the different cultural groups of Kuwait to the museum? Mm -hmm. 
So I, I will make sure not to speak too long that you have the chance to translate in between. I'm sorry mm -hmm. for that, I forgot it. Um, um, so, um, I mean, the different cultural groups are, um, in, in, in Kuwait, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, th those are the societies which, have, um, which, which are living in the country for, for a very long time, but they are organized in different cultural groups. So, um, we have to approach the different, different, uh, different cultural um, 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 outputs of those groups. This is very important. Because I'm, I'm not too much speaking about uh, the local society of Kuwait. This is very well reached, but um, there are many groups at the side which we do not reach sufficiently yet. There are different, uh, different ways to do that. First of all, with cultural topics, which are related to special cultural groups. Um, and um, uh, cultural topics could be, for example, cultural topics could be, for example, the traditions, the different traditions. So I leave you to uh, translate this first, and then I continue. Okay. <laughs> المراكز الثقافية إنه توصل لجميع شرائح المجتمع وخاصة شرائح المجتمع اللي مختلفة ثقافتها عن المجتمع المحلي. فدكتور باكر ذكر ذكر إنه في برامج تستهدف هذه الشرائح من المجتمع وتكون منظمة خاصة لإلهم بتلامس ثقافتهم بتلامس عاداتهم وبهيدا الطريقة بنقدر نستقطبهم بالبرامج. Do you have a, another part for this question? Yes, or? yes it's because what I wanted to say, it's, it's very important to look into the society. It's not a, a, a cultural center or museum should not, to my opinion, um, display, display topics which are not related to the society. So looking into the society or into the society and reflecting the societies is one of the main tasks of a museum and we have four of them. So um, this is something which has to happen to my opinion. And uh, it's, also very, it's, it's also very important to get this society reflection in offering uh, participation for the different societies. So invite the societies to take part in programs, to take part in exhibition projects. Okay. فبالنسبة uh, لدكتور واكر مفروض المتاحف لما تكون عم بتحدد المواضيع اللي رح تعرضها تتطلع في المجتمع تتأكد إنه عم تدرس المجتمع وتستنبط الأفكار من المجتمع نفسه مش أفكار بعيدة عن المجتمع اللي إحنا عايشين فيه وبهيدي الطريقة ممكن إن نحفز الجميع على المشاركة بالبرامج ونحفزهم على الحضور والمتابعة بالبرامج أكثر. Okay, uh, Dr. Becker, we have a question from um, Yara. Uh, she's saying, historically speaking, museums and nation building have been exclusionary. What do you think the role of museums today is in making sure they are diverse in content and audience? Yes, thank you very much for this question, Yara. Um, it's, um, I think um, if you, if you want to be a public space for everybody, you have to take all parts of the society at the hand and, and invite them to, to participate. And participation, I mentioned this before, uh, for me is, is one of the tools which might work very well to get people related to the, to the museum. Um, you're right if you say that um, in, the, in, in the past, let's go back 100 years and look a little bit to Europe, and it was a very exclusive thing. And the history of museum is something extremely exclusive because um, the dukes, the nations I, 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 spoke about, uh, I spoke about in the lecture, the dukes and kings and the very early nations in the 19th century, they collected basically for themselves. The first collections had been collections of dukes in the, in the 18th century, and they invited exclusive people to show what they have. So the same thing the, 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 the stamp collectors did in the past, you know, they share their stamp collection only to others. 
we, we are living in a complete different society. So therefore, exclusivity cannot be the goal in a globalized and diverse society. So to my opinion, we have to look into all groups of society and also invite them to be part of the museum and also to be part of the museum work, by the way. Yara, I'm going to ask you, in the مبدأ الاحتكار بس طبقات معينة من المجتمع هي اللي بتبني الدول برأي دكتور كريستيان هل المتاحف عندها دور في هذا الموضوع بالمجتمع اللي احنا منعيش فيه اليوم ودكتور كريستيان جاوب انه مجتمعنا مختلف جدا عن المختلف المجتمعات القديمة اللي كانت في يوروب وفي أوروبا وبيقول انه بالماضي كان في طبقة معينة من المجتمع هي اللي بتحصل على المقتنيات وهي اللي بتقرر مصير الباقيين أما في عالمنا اليوم المجتمع مختلف تماما ولازم دعوة الجميع للمشاركة وهذا دور مهم جدا وواجب على المتاحف في عالمنا اليوم The next question Dr. Christian is from Alison Price um, She says that uh, she has lived in Kuwait for 37 years and she's asking you do you consider Kuwait's identity to be polycultural or built on its pre-oil history? Yes, I mean this is a this is a question we might discuss uh, in, in 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 a complete uh, in a complete uh, additional talk. Um, I think inside the question there is there is the there is um, the, the there are the two layers already hidden. It's the national identity um, um, to, uh, um, versus the cultural identities. Of course, if you go to the pre-oil um, area, you come to the cultural identities. And cultural identities um, come together in a nation which was built now exactly 60 years ago. And um, so the cultural identities are integrated into the national identity. But national identity, as I wanted to emphasize um, with an example in my lecture regarding Qatar, national identity is very modern oriented in these countries because many people are related to cultural identities on the one side, given by the families, given by the tribes. And on the other side, the people are related to the, to the national history. And sport is the best example to observe this. So when a big sports star, I recall the Kuwaiti football team uh, going very far in the world championship. Um, so if, if, if this happens, if this happens, then you can capture national identity. So we have these two layers. On the one side, you have the cultural identities and coming back to Europe, you recognize again cultural identity is built on ancient identities from countries who are away from, who are far away from Europe, but they build the humanist cultural identity on those cultures in order to shape the national identity. It's very exciting that most of the, I would say all of the GCC countries, they are in the middle of this uh, uh, national identification process. And this makes it uh, very, very interesting. I would not argue exclus exclusively. Um, I'm, so I'm sorry, Nada, <laughs> you probably forget it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not uh, uh, arguing exclusively. I'm arguing uh, uh, again, uh, 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 connecting cultural and national identity and this, um, and, and, and this inter interaction of both. Okay. So, the question was from Alison about the Kuwait culture. She asked Dr. Christian, how do you see the Kuwait culture? Is it related to the differences of cultures or is it related to the time before the Dr. Christian said that there are different types of cultures and culture of the Kuwait culture, and it is a mix of the two. والموضوع هذا واسع جدا وبياخذ محاضره كامله للتعمق فيه اكثر. The next question, Dr. Christian, also from the public. Uh, who is supposed to work in cultural centers? Do they have to be related to the cultural topics like scientists, artists, 
or just people who are givers and like to work in nonprofit organizations and people who believe in culture and education and believe in different styles of delivering knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for this question. Um, the current situation which we have in, in, in the Sheikh Abdullah Al Salem Cultural Center is that we have specialists for all kinds of areas. So we have specialists like scientists who are working in the different museums. We have specialists who are working and like you, another leading the educational department. So they have to be edu educationists and um, we have people in management, but all areas in such a museum, you have the content areas, but you also have uh, marketing, you have IT, you have different areas in such a cultural center where you need specialists. So museum work today is a high profession and um, uh, the majority is educated in this area. It's possible that people do not bring this education and work in museums or cultural centers, but this is the main reason why I plan and I wish to give an internal museum education back to those in our institution who could not participate yet in that. But museum work is a highly professionalized work and it needs professional people um, um, like, like, like any profession uh, uh, as well. So it's not enough, it's not enough to love culture. I mean, you only look out for a job in such a center if you love culture. If, if not, you probably will do this, but you need the proper education for that. Okay, so the uh, question can be uh, um, Dr. Christian, men who are المفروض يعمل في المراكز الثقافية هل هم علماء ومتخصصين أو أي شخص مهتم بالشأن العام وبالمؤسسات الغير ربحية ومهتم بالمواضيع اللي في المتاحف ممكن يعمل فيها فدكتور كريستيان بيركز على موضوع أنه المتاحف بحاجة لمتخصصين بمختلف المجالات بحاجة لمتخصصين بالتربية بحاجة لمتخصصين بالعلوم وبالفنون الجميلة حتى يتمكنوا من توصيل المعلومات بشكل واضح ومهني للزوار وطبعا هناك قسم التسويق وقسم العلاقات العامة وقسم المعلوماتية كمان في متخصصين مفروض يكونوا في هذا المجال وهذا ما بيمنع أن الأشخاص يلي بيهتموا بالثقافة يجوا على المركز ويساعدوا بس ما فيهم يكونوا هم الأساس في من الموظفين دكتور كريستين you have something to say Please uh, unmute yourself. I'm sorry for that. Um, let me let me only add to that that um, that um, um, we and and if I say we, I, I, I mean the senior staff of uh, the Sheikh Abdullah Al Salem Cultural Center. We developed uh, 